Okay, so now let's start a conservation of energy. So we are going to consider a system or systems, right, which only has a conservative forces. So I hope you remember what are the conservative forces, right? So in a system, if you draw the forces, it has only gravity or the spring force. So which are correct. So this is a conservative force, this is a conservative force, but friction is not a conservative force. So in our system, uh, we are going to use only the, the systems that only have these forces are the system that we are going to consider, right? And uh, let's take a system like that, the same example that we did initially. There is a book, right? It is uh, at a height yi from the ground. Okay, and now you drop the book, so it the force only acting is the gravity, which is the conservative force. And let's think now it's at this level, right? And let me mark this as our initial and final level. So the final height is uh, y final, and the displacement is delta y. Right, so um, uh, we done we, we we found from our previous uh, video in the conservative forces the work done uh, by a conservative force is so here the gravity is negative change in potential energy, right? So work done by a conservative force is negative change in potential energy. So here the only conservative force is the gravity. Also we learned about work kinetic energy theorem which is work net is equal delta Ke. So if I um, uh, use these two so I can rewrite the work net because the only force acting is mg so work G, MG or G, right, delta Ke. So from these two equations, I can write my change in kinetic energy is equal to negative change in potential energy, right. So I can rewrite that, change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy is zero, right. So that means... Um, there is no any energy loss. If I rewrite this once again, you can find it very easily. So let me write this again. So change means kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial plus potential energy final minus potential energy initial is zero. So I can group all the initials one side and finals one side. So I can write plus potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final plus uh, potential energy final. So it's like initially the total mechanical energy. So mechanical energy means kinetic energy and potential energy, no other energies. So it's like the total mechanical energy which is in an initial condition. So you can decide which is your initial condition. So like here, initially equal to total mechanical energy finally. So like there is a system and initially the system was like something and then finally it is like another situation. But the total energy initially is equal to total energy finally. So this is called
conservation of energy. So I can write that in symbols E initial is equal to E final. Right? So uh, when we rewrite or if we could rewrite that so conservation of energy means E initial. So E, e means you have to consider kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial so both will be there equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final right so this is conservation of energy so uh, in the powerpoint slide of chapter 5 see uh, or look at slide number 43 right so um, you can see um, give me one second okay there is a skier sliding from from a highest position to a lowest position right okay so um, so let's take that uh, she starts from rest and reach here with some final velocity right and um, let's analyze a position A and some intermediate position B and here C and let's take the vertical velocity is uh, like H here and H1 here right so uh, if we neglect or if we assume that there is no any frictional force or air friction right so then this is a system only has a mechanical energy so only the gravity is acting right so the system is only has conservative forces so we can apply conservation of energy right so let's find the total energy here e a right so that means the kinetic energy here so that is going to be zero because um, kinetic energy is one half m v squared so in this system we don't have spring so don't worry about that so we have a um, if I write okay kinetic energy plus potential energy gravity kinetic energy is zero because the velocity is zero but the potential energy if the person's weight is m m g h remember the potential energy the height is vertical height if I write in EB, so kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy, so definitely the, the speed will increase and let's take, it's like V1, so I can write half M V1 squared and the potential energy MGH1. And here if I write EC, half M more uh, greater velocity plus the potential energy I'm going to take this as my zero potential level so zero so the conservation of energy is telling us that if you find this energy right some some x joules this is going to be some the same x joules and this is going to be same x joules that means if you add the total mechanical energy here that should be equal to the total mechanical energy here, here or at any point, right? So you can, if you have a, a system with non-conservative force, you can apply the uh, conservation of energy, right? Before going into problems, let me see one more example, which is a simple pendulum, right? So you, you now the pendulum, so so when it is at rest, it's like that. Then when it is swing, so I'm going to take this level as my zero potential energy. So it's going to swing from here to here. I think it's not going to scale, right? So um, when it, so it will move up to uh, or until its velocity become zero so at these ends 
the velocities are zero. So what can you say about the kinetic energy? Zero. The potential energy, this is its maximum height. Right? So this is the maximum potential energy. Right? So here you have only, if I put um, the total energy, it is going to be the potential energy maximum only. Right? And if you find the total energy here, here the potential energy is zero, but uh, you can find the kinetic energy. This is in this position, it has its maximum speed. So, fmv squared, which is going to be its maximum. Right? And here, same as this one. So, here the, you can find the total energy by just finding mgh. Right? Here you can find the total energy just finding 1 half mv squared. So when a problem comes, we'll see how we can use this one. Right? So these are two examples that you, you can use like initial situation, final situation. So you can use total energy here is equal to total energy there. Right? So in my next video, we'll do, uh, okay, before that, I want to give one more example. Okay, so uh, this example, let's see, there is a building. So this is in slide number 45, right? So it's a question, but uh, now let's see how we can work on that. So there is a building. And uh, from this position, a person is throwing three balls with different masses, but, uh, and also with different angles, for example, the M1 is going to be like that, M2 is going to be like that, M3 is going to be like that. So they all um, hit the ground, right? Um, so the other condition is the masses are different, but they are all thrown with same initial velocity right so same initial velocity so vi is same for all so my question is the first question what about the speeds of each of these uh, masses uh, at the instant Uh, when they hit the, at the instant they hit the ground. So what do you think? Whether it would be different or same, right? Actually the answer is same. How? So they have different masses, but the initial velocity is same. So they hit with same velocity. So let's see. Take one mass, the first one, uh, the M1, right? So I'm going to write, this is my initial, and when it's hit, here is my final. So I'm going to use conservation of energy. The total energy initially should be equal to total energy finally, right? And the total mechanical energy means I need to consider kinetic and potential. Here also, kinetic and potential, right? So the initial kinetic energy for M1 half M1 V initial squared, right? So here when I talk about potential energy, I need to define which is my zero potential energy. So I took ground is my zero potential energy. And the height, let's take Y. So the potential energy is M1 G Y, right? And then when it hits the ground, let's take it's hitting with the velocity Vf. So the kinetic energy is V final squared. The potential energy is zero because it's at zero potential energy. So if I simplify this one, so I can cancel all the m's. So the Vf squared is going to be 
vi squared plus 2gy it's like a kinematic equation that we get anyway so the v final depends on v initial the gravitational acceleration and the height so for all these m1 m2 m3 we have same v initial we have same g and all of them this is the initial position whether they go by this or that or this this is the initial position so initial potential energy the y is same for all so we can say that the vf is same for all but uh, what can you say uh, if i ask uh, the kinetic energy of uh, these uh, masses when they hit here so for the m1 it's going to be half m1 v final squared for the second one half m2 the v final is same for the third one half m3 the v final is same but here you can see so which one is massive that would have the most kinetic energy so the kinetic energy will be different but the final speed is going to be same right so now this is my end of this video so in my next video you can see some examples uh, problems in conservation of energy thanks